It's Chippy from Ultraport News and UMPCPortal.com and uh, in this video I'm going to show you the Action Tech Screen Beam Display Receiver SBWD100A. Actually, what it is, is a very ugly wide eye and mirror cast receiver. It costs about $70. Uh, dollars. It's also a remote uh, wireless USB port as well. So what I'm going to do is just try and switch on this fresh ThinkPad that I've got here. I haven't connected it yet. I just want to run a live video just to see how easy it is for a first timer and I haven't ever used it, set this up yet and used it. Um, I've just plugged it in. It's connected to the screen here, 1080p. What I'm going to do is I've found the WideEye app on this uh, Lenovo ThinkPad here. If we switch that back on, I'll show you the, the WideEye app. And I haven't even accepted the, the end user uh, license agreement yet. Let's just uh, log in. So there's the end user license agreement. Just to prove that I haven't actually been into this app yet. What is going to happen then, if you don't know WiDi, is that the screen and audio is going to be transmitted over Wi-Fi, hopefully Wi-Fi direct to this, and then that's going to display uh, on, the, on the screen. So, ready to connect. I think it might have even detected this already, because it's strange that it's come out of uh, standby. On the app here, which is an Intel app, this is the Windows 7 version, it's seen this uh, screen. Now, I don't know if this screen is this screen, but I do now because on the screen it's got the same ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to that. Just it says connect. You've got the option to connect automatically. So I'm just going to connect. And what's going to happen is we're going to get a code come up on the screen here. And that is the code I'm going to type into this app, which is now requesting it, 20469 going to hit continue uh, and now you've got it's counting down there's 46 seconds left to enter the pin I've entered the pin hopefully that's now connecting over Wi-Fi I'm trying to find the best uh, method of connection I assume it can go over the hotspot as well rather than Wi-Fi direct if Wi-Fi direct is not uh, supported verifying security on the screen now uh, I don't want this app to go into standby so it looks like it's going to work. Waiting for application to connect and looks like it's worked. So we now have a mirrored screen. Hey, good. Um, what I'm going to do is just, just take the Wi-Fi now and see what's happening in terms of ports. So we've got, um, I think it looks like we've got an additional Wi-Fi port here. Uh, wireless connection to and has it created a virtual one? Looks like we've got two two Wi-Fi ports connected, and this one uh, on the top here is 104 megabits per second connected, and this one on the bottom is 65 megabits connected. Actually, it's changing a little bit at the moment, and so it's um, actually um, that's not too bad at all. The, the latency isn't too bad. Let me just show you the latency. Okay, so you can see some latency there, but it's not massive. That's what, I don't know, 100 milliseconds, something like that, maybe a bit less, 50 milliseconds. Now let's see if we can do an extended uh, screen on that. So we'll go to extended uh, screen and let's see what, we can, uh, see what we can see now. Now then, what we should have, and there it is, is an extended screen. So now we've got that working over there. We should also have, if I go back, a second uh, audio device now. Well, go back over there. If I go to audio, go to playback devices, I should see now I've got um, Intel WideEye audio device. So the audio from this is now going out to this screen. Uh, I actually don't have um, anything connected in there. There's no speakers in this. so. Um, so that shows you you get uh, remote uh, audio as well. And that is uh, quoted to be CD quality. This is a ten, full 1080p resolution. Note that it's not uncompressed. So the signal goes out of wider, out of the uh, software here, compressed. So it's taking up some CPU as well. In fact, if I, um, if I why is this screen just timing out so quickly? I think this is on Lenovo battery uh, saving mode. If I have a look at the processes, let's see what sort of, 
CPU this is taking up. Actually, hold on, I think it might even be doing it in hardware because of Intel Quick Sync Video. It's taking 4%, 2% CPU. So the actual encoding of the video, the compression of the video, is being done by, it looks in hardware, and the decompression is being done obviously in hardware on the action tech here. I'm sorry that the screen timeout is a bit shitty here. That's actually nothing to do with Wi-Fi. I have not set the screen timeout properly on this one. Um, let me just do power options. And I think there's a, I think there's a timers off mode. There we go, presentation mode. There it is, good. Now, there's one other thing I wanna show you. This has a remote uh, USB connection. So, what we can do, so we're going to take a, uh, a, a webcam, going to plug it in now to this, and this is kind of an interesting test, I've never done this before, and I've now plugged in this webcam to a remote USB port, so there's no, connect, no connectivity back to this device here, and what I want to see is if that webcam, uh, and I'm going to go to uh, duplicate screen now, so that you can see here maybe uh, what's happening. And let's just see if that um, remote webcam appears on this device. So I think, let's have a look, see if I've got some. Um, right. Okay, we'll go to device, uh, device manager and uh, we'll see if that has popped up on there. So we get into why USB is there. Let's have a look at display adapters, mm, imaging devices. We've got two cameras here. I'm gonna pull out, there's two cameras showing here. Let me just pull one out, pull that out. Let's see if anything happens. No, it didn't pick up that camera, right? Let's try something else, very simple. We'll try a USB stick in here. Let's see if it picks that up and see if it does anything with that. Uh, yes, the lights come on on the USB stick there. And I'm going to go to desktop now and just see if that remote storage has appeared. Not yet. Uh, maybe there's drivers to install on this end before that happens but uh, certainly it's powered the USB device. Now, I've seen this working before, uh, and I'll be honest, I can't remember what it was working with. What USB device was, um, was connected to it and what, what was working. That's kind of funny. Um, Certainly not showing up that uh, USB stick there, unfortunately, at the moment. But maybe if I just leave that for a bit. Let me have a look for another USB. What else can we? Uh, what else can we connect? I'm just gonna just gonna go to the other side of the office. I've got some other USB stuff here that I could probably connect. How about this? A Y gig. Uh, uh, adapter. Let's just see if there's any uh, no drivers installing there at the moment. And the device doesn't seem to be showing up. So I'll just pull it out. Let's try this uh, gigabit ethernet uh, adapter. See if it picks that up. Doesn't seem to be uh, picking any of those up. Now, I did uh, see the remote uh, USB working on Windows 8. So maybe we've got um, some issues with Windows 7 on the remote USB there, but um, this actually says Intel Y-USB and U-O-I-P hub. USB over IP hub. Hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, that is not working. But 
I'm pleased to see that the uh, the display is working and that the latency is actually pretty okay. Let's see if we've got a video that I can just uh, show you. And any demo videos here? No demo videos. Let's go to the network. Right, we'll play some reme uh, remote media. So this is kind of interesting because this is going over Wi-Fi to my NAS and also over Wi-Fi to drive the screen here. So let's just um, get something up, see if that will play back. We'll have a look at the uh, We'll have a look at the uh, network uh, cards as well, see how they're performing. Oh! Something's happening. So, we are getting, um, wow, okay. So I've got a, uh, a DVD rip playing in the background there now. That's coming over Wi-Fi at uh, what looks like it's taking, I don't know, 3 or 4% of the Wi-Fi on one connection. But we've got the virtual Wi-Fi port for the uh, Wi-Fi Direct connected to here, and that's also connected at about 5% utilization as well. Actually, that's pretty good. That's a pretty uh, interesting uh, demo, and I think it's very important that uh oh, sorry kids very important that um i turn that off i wasn't intended to show anything nasty there all right so um just wanted to, i really wanted to do that live and i really wanted to do it first time live without any edits so you can see uh whether it works or not and it really did work out of the box um from the point of view of the device itself and out of the box in terms of this um, ThinkPad I've got here. So any device that's got um, a recent Centrino in it, that's disconnected now because I'm just going to standby, a recent Centrino in it, uh, on a core i uh, three, four or three, five or seven um, from second generation on, I believe, should be able to support Wi-Di. Uh, most Ultrabooks uh, support Wi-Di and all new Ultrabooks sh should be supporting uh, Wi-Di. And when I say new, I mean Haswell generation starting from September uh, 2013. I will do some more tests. It looks like w uh, latency is not gonna be good enough for gaming. Certainly not, uh, you know, sort of shoot them up type gaming. Maybe some casual games that will work. Video watching, that latency is not going to be an issue. And I want to test this remote uh, USB as well because actually um, this could be a really interesting solution for remote cameras. You put this up somewhere uh, in a waterproof box powered. And in, in fact, this is only a five volt input. So you could actually have it battery powered or solar powered. And um, you don't have to connect the HDMI. You can actually just have a remote webcam somewhere. So uh, for a security solution, plug in any old uh, webcam and place this somewhere with power and you're away. You can actually uh, do some remote webcam stuff, which I think is really cool. And just think of the other devices you could connect into there. We've just tried uh, a Y gig, um, uh, sorry, gigabit ethernet, but we could put um, wireless LAN remotely as well. So if you've got a poor Wi-Fi reception, you connect over Wi-Fi direct to this and then that connects through uh, to the to the local hotspot as well so you can actually boost your internet connectivity uh, in some situations what else remote hard drives um, even remote USB remote microphones that could be something for for conferencing which could be quite interesting so I'll tell test that out um, screen beam is the device and it's from action tech and I think it's about $70 right now uh, it looks ugly, I'm sorry, but it does look ugly, but it seems to work. So um, if that's something that's gonna be hidden away behind a screen, who cares what it looks like? There'll be more about this on ultrabooknews.com. Uh, but for the meantime, that's it. Thanks for watching, my name's Chippy. Please don't forget to like the video 
uh, join us on the uh, channel, subscribe, and you'll get all the new videos that are coming up from UPC Portal and Ultraport News right in your mailbox. Thanks for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.